Good morning, everyone. Glad you found us for our online worship. If you would take a moment and use that QR code to sign in, register your attendance to make sure you include everybody that is watching with you this morning. Hopefully you're feeling okay and that's not the reason why you're away, but hey, if you are not feeling well, we will always have this option for you to be fed by God's word and reminded of God's great love for you in Christ Jesus right here online all the time. So without further ado, let's get going with our opening song. And remember, we have a special guest, son of the congregation, Ethan Luft, is bringing us God's word today. Let's get going with our opening song. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly Psalm 15. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right, and speaks truth in his heart. Who does not slander with his tongue, and does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change, who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. We continue with our confession and absolution. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, 
and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us and has sent his Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forward and serve the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The Old Testament for the fourth Sunday after Epiphany comes from Micah chapter 6. Hear what the Lord says, Arise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear you mountains, the indictment of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth, for the Lord has indictment against has an indictment against his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you? How have I worried you? wearied you answer me for i brought you up from the land of egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery and i sent before you moses aaron and miriam O oh, my people remember what balak king of moab devised and what balaam the son of beor answered him and what happened from shittim to gilgal that you may know the saving acts of the lord with what shall i come before the lord and Bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. St. Paul writes, The words of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will throw it. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world does not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. 
For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were noble. Were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things they, that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let no one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you, falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted also the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm glad to be bringing you today's children's message. So if you want to come a little closer to the TV or whatever you're watching it on, or if you're already as close as you can get, that's no problem too. So today in Sunday school, we're talking about the woman at the well a woman that Jesus met at the well. And it's always a good reminder for us to see how Jesus interacts with this woman, and it helps us to remember how God wants us to interact with people too. So Jesus meets with this woman at the well. She's coming to the well at a time when not a lot of people are going to be there because she has a bad reputation in the community. Some people don't like her very much or like what she does. And so she, approaching the well, comes to Jesus and sees Jesus and is amazed that Jesus is talking to her because she feels like maybe God doesn't really love her or that God has forgotten about her. She doesn't realize that Jesus is true God at this point, but she's about to learn that message. Jesus talks to her, and she is so surprised that somebody would talk to her because she doesn't feel really good about herself. And why? Well, because she's heard about God before, but she's never really felt his love, and she's forgotten that God loves everyone, and Jesus is going to remind her of that. So during their conversation, it comes up that Jesus knows everything about her, even the things that she has done wrong. But does Jesus scold her or send her to her room or something crazy like that? No, Jesus shows love. Jesus tells her 
that her sins are forgiven, that she is, that he is the Savior that she has been waiting for. She is so excited to know that she has met the Savior of the world and that Jesus loves her no matter what she has done in her life. She promises that she is going to do better and she also promises that she is going to tell everybody about Jesus. And that's exactly what she does. She has felt Jesus' love, and she wants to share that love with others too. And that's how Jesus comes to us too. Jesus is the one that always forgives us, the one that always loves us. And he will never leave us, and he always hears us, and he's always there with us. He promises that. Even though we don't see him, if we're afraid, we know he's there. If we're sad, we know that he's there and that he cares for us. That's one of the wonderful things about being a follower of Jesus, knowing that he loves us and cares for us and that he will be with us until the day we will be with him forever. Isn't that a wonderful promise? Let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving me. Thank you for Jesus, my Savior, the one that takes my sins away and promises to love me forever. Amen.
I chose the title for this sermon, What Really Matters? Because I think that's an important question to ask. And I'm not sure if it's one that we ask often enough. Does this question come to mind in our regular day-to-day? So I'll ask it to you. What matters to you? I'm sure many of us can come up with similar things like our family matters to us or our job, our health. Um, Hopefully, many of us would say that our faith, our faith in Jesus matters to us. And of course, we all have unique interests and hobbies and skills. We're all going to have, you know, individual things that we care about and that we invest our time into. So I guess instead of just asking what matters to you, a more important question to ask is, do the things that matter to you ever uh, overshadow the thing that really matters? And of course, today, that's what we're going to spend some of our time talking about. What matters to us versus what really matters. See, the Corinthians who received this letter from Paul, they obviously lived in a very different culture, a very different time period than we do today. And so the things that matter to them are probably a little bit different than the things that matter to us, you know, sports or Instagram or anything like that. But they did really value education. And perhaps more than just education, it was uh, intellectual status. Things like that really mattered to people in this culture. And we can see the effects that this had on the Christians in Corinth. If we look at our verses from last week, last week we read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 18. And we can see Paul addressing some divisions in the church that have arisen because people are competing with one another with who has the best teacher, whose teacher has the best social or intellectual status, whose teacher is the wisest. See, Paul writes in verse 12, some of you say, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas. See, these things that really mattered in the culture and to the people, they kind of cause a little bit of issues in the church. And I think this is why Paul ends that section in verse 17, which is the verse right before our reading begins today. And he says, for God did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And this is important. He says, he sent me to preach the gospel and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Eloquent wisdom, rhetoric, intellectual status. These things really mattered to the Corinthians. And Paul is saying, these things are overshadowing the one thing that really matters. That is the word of the cross, the cross of Christ. And we'll talk more about this in just a minute. But before we get to that, before we get to what really matters and to kind of introduce that idea, I thought I would read a quote for you guys. And it's from a TV show. It's one of my favorite TV shows, actually. And I'll I'll tell you what the show is after I read the quote. It goes like this. All I know is that every time I've been faced with a tough decision, There's only one thing that outweighs every other concern. One thing that will make you rethink everything you thought you knew. Every instinct, every rational calculation. Love. Now, if you don't recognize that quote, it's from the TV show The Office. And Jim Halpert, he says this to Dwight in a very emotional Uh, part of the series towards the end of the show. And Jim Halpert, he is a paper salesman. He's no theologian. 
So in order for me to use this quote properly for the sermon, I think I have to tweak it just a little bit because he didn't quite get to the point that I wanted to make. So I'll put it this way. There is one thing that will make you rethink everything you thought you knew, every instinct, every rational calculation. And that is the word of the cross. It's the word of God. It's the love of God in Christ Jesus. See, this truth revealed to us in God's word that God has in fact sent Jesus to die for us. This will make us rethink everything the world tells us. It flips the wisdom of the world on its head. This is the thing that really matters, that the creator of the universe has come into his creation to save his creatures. And yes, as we said, according to the standards of the world, this sounds completely foolish. And as Jim might say it, This is the one thing that will make you give up on everything you thought you knew. Everything the world tells us. This is the one thing that really matters. Now, as Christians, we have to constantly remind ourselves and admit to the fact that we don't understand everything. There are lots of things about our faith Lots of things written in the Bible, lots of things that God does that we just can't understand. And I think there's a verse in our reading from 1 Corinthians that kind of highlights this point for us. Uh, And that's verse 21. It's the second half of that verse. And it says, It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. Now, whenever I first read this verse, it kind of just caught my attention because Paul here is admitting to the fact that what we preach is foolish, that the things we believe, the things that we do, the things that I'm preaching right now, they don't always make sense. I mean, just take our worship service, for example. At the beginning of service today, We did confession and absolution. And we heard those words read that said, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before one another that we have sinned. See, at the beginning of this worship service, we confessed that we do not deserve anything from God. We are unworthy of anything that God has to offer. And according to any sort of reason or logic, we deserve the opposite, right? We deserve damnation from God. The world will say, will you get what you deserve or what goes around comes around, right? These are, this is how the world operates. But we read today that God has made foolish the wisdom of the world. And this, this is the foolishness of what we believe that despite how much we fall short, despite how unworthy we are, despite how often we put the things that really matter to us over Jesus, over the thing that actually matters. It actually pleases God to save us, to save us who are completely unworthy. God desires to save us. In fact, the only thing that matters to God is our salvation. And that is completely foolish. Today, we've talked about the things that matter to us and how we can put those things over the one thing that really matters, that God has revealed himself to us in Jesus and shown his love to us by dying and rising for us. And we've talked about how even though we do these things and even though we fall short and even though it's completely foolish, that God actually desires to save us, save the ones who don't deserve it. And so I think the last question to ask here is, if this is so foolish, if 
this is so opposite to everything, our instinct, to every rational calculation, to the standards of the world. If this is so opposite of everything we're told to believe, then why do we believe it? I think it's an important question to ask. And for this, I'll take us to the very end of this letter to the Corinthians in chapter 15. And we get to a section where Paul is talking about the resurrection from the dead. And he's talking about something that to many people would sound completely crazy. He says, if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. See, Paul is saying, if Jesus was not raised from the dead, then none of us would be here today. Then it would make no sense to believe any of the words written in this book. But, dear friends, Christ has been raised from the dead. And as a result of this resurrection, we are promised something even crazier, even more foolish. That just as Christ has been raised from the dead, you will too. That there will be a day when Christ comes again. A day when our bodies are raised, when creation is completely restored. A day with no pain, no divisions, nothing opposing God. And yeah, that sounds pretty foolish. But Paul says, the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, to us who will be raised on that last day when Christ comes again. To us, the word of the cross is the power of God. So let's continue to live in a way that the world finds foolish. Let's continue to rely on this word of the cross and that this word is where God works and prepares us for that day. When, as the Beatitudes will say, whenever we will see God. And this is the only thing that really matters. We continue our worship by returning to our Lord a portion of the gifts he has blessed us with and entrusted to us for his kingdom work. We have several giving options for you to utilize. As St. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Arrange in advance for the gift you have promised, so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not as an extraction. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has made up his mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all contentment in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Here are this week's highlights from the Team Jesus News. Shakespeare's pizza orders and payments are due by Sunday, January 29th at noon, so contact the office as soon as possible to get your orders in. Also this Sunday, January 29th, Tassos is holding their chili and soup luncheon as an informational meeting and fellowship time starting after the second service. Be sure to join in and learn more about this program.
Growing Faithful families, our current ninth grade students and their parents will be meeting on January 29th from 11.30 to 1 for their Growing Faithful Families event. Also, all current 5th grade through 12th grade students and their families will meet next Sunday, February 5th, for a special GFF event from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Our next Gather Around the Tables Women's Ministry event will be February 10th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. To save a chair at the tables, be sure to contact Selena Speaks or reach out to the church office. Also, parents of pre-K through 5th grade students, do you want to enjoy a date night out or just two hours to yourself? Then drop off your students for a fun-filled evening learning about Jesus' love for us. This event will be held on Saturday, February 11th from 5 to 7.30 p.m. You must pre-register your child for this event, so see the Team Jesus News for the QR code to register. Finally, Vicar Alex is looking for at least four male and female vocalists to participate in a special Ash Wednesday Lenten Choir performance. More details for that are in your Team Jesus News. If you're interested, contact Vicar Alex. And for more information about this and everything going on at St. Stephen, make sure to check this week's Team Jesus News. At this time, we make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
This morning on our prayers, we want to remember Vic Edwards. That's Vicki Kimmel's dad that's recovering from hip surgery. Madonna, also Madonna Miller for her uh, battle with pneumonia. She's recovering, hopefully. Uh, prayers for Leanne and Bill Craddock as they lost their dog, Sparky. That's uh, Terry Ullman's parents. Also, prayers for Mike Scarroll. This is Jim's father, uh, just for good uh, results from his adrenal gland removal. We're praying that there is uh, that all the cancer is gone. Prayers for Alan. This is brother-in-law of Greg Lammers uh, for his battle with cancer. And also Shirley Getz. This is Andy Starkeybaum's mother's friend that's battling cancer. Prayers for Randy. This is a friend of the Snyders that's recovering from surgery. And also prayers for Tony, classmate of Gail and Gary Snyder, for battling uh, multiple myeloma. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Heavenly Father, we are blessed because we inherit your kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Grant boldness to your church to be church to be faithful in preaching and teaching your word. Bless our congregation as we continue our ministry clarity process. Create in us willingness to be more committed to following you. Let the Holy Spirit make changes in our hearts so that we will be faithful stewards the, that you would have us be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Lord, grant to all leaders a desire to bring justice and peace so that the good news of Jesus may be preached in every nation. Lord, be with our nation and put away all anger and malice. Let the light of your love shine into the darkness of this world. Watch over those keeping peace in our land and destroy the forces of evil working against that effort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting Father, look with mercy on the sick, injured, and recovering, including Vic, Madonna, Leanne's, and Bill's uh, as they're mourning the loss of Sparky, Mike, Alan, Shirley, Tony, and Randy. If it be your will, give them healing, restoration, and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, just as Jesus was commissioned for service in your kingdom by his baptism, you give us new life and power to serve you through our baptism. So we celebrate with Shelby, Josie, Sophie, Selena, Don, Madden, and Liam as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays. Keep them and all of us in your baptismal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you care deeply about marriage and have promised to be the cord that binds marriage together. So we rejoice with Barry and Debbie and Stuart and Nayu Lee as they celebrate another wedding anniversary. Continue to bless and strengthen them and all of our marriages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Having worshipped our Lord, let us receive the benediction of our Lord, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless us and preserve us. Amen. Yeah.
Yeah.